Dr. Jason Saunders here with HBOT USA. If you're watching this video, then either you already have a hyperbaric clinic and you're offering hyperbaric therapy to patients, or you're in the process of considering adding hyperbaric to an existing clinic or in the process of maybe opening a hyperbaric clinic itself. In any case, you're curious, what are the four things that every hyperbaric clinic really should have? And that's what we're gonna answer in this video. So the first one is a trained, certified hyperbaric clinician, the healthcare provider overseeing the clinic, followed by a certified hyperbaric technician, the person in charge of actually operating the equipment. So the first recommendation on my list is actually not mandatory. It's not definitively required right now, although some states have made it a requirement and more states in the future are on the list to start making this a requirement is having a certified hyperbaric clinician and having a certified hyperbaric technician. So whether you're just trying to stay ahead of the curve or if your state already requires it, this is an important step one in operating a safe and effective hyperbaric clinic. However, obviously, if you're offering this therapy as a specialized service, either as a clinic as a whole, like a hyperbaric clinic, or that you're adding hyperbaric to your existing practice, certainly the practitioner and the person operating the equipment, the technician, should be certified in that process, number one, so that you know that everybody being treated in the office is being safe, as well as we're keeping the rest of our office and staff safe, and equally important that we're offering the most up-to-date and the most beneficial protocols that we know to date for the different indications or the different health-related goals that we're trying to meet for that patient. So making sure that these people are certified increases the likelihood that we're going to be keeping everybody as safe as possible and keeping the treatments as effective as possible. So while it's not mandatory, I highly recommend it. So while the first recommendation at the time of this recording is not yet mandatory or required across the entire country, recommendations two, three, and four really are. So number two is have a certified safety director. What does that mean? What it means is the NFPA, the National Fire Protection Agency, who governs hyperbaric safety in NFPA 99, chapter 14, that covers hyperbaric clinics and hyperbaric safety, they require that every clinic have a certified safety director. It's not necessarily written out explicitly what that training entails, only that they get trained and that they are certified. And so having a certified safety hyperbaric technician is a requirement. By the way, as part of my work at the International Board of Undersea Medicine, our goal is to really simplify the process of running hyperbaric therapy equipment inside of a clinic. And so we've created online versions of some of these courses, as well as we have in-person versions of other parts of these courses to make sure that you're easily able to meet the requirements to run a safe and effective hyperbaric clinic. We have a few in-person courses coming up over the next few months and registration is closing soon. So if you're ready to learn how to offer hyperbarics safely and effectively, head over to hbotusa.com events and secure your spot today. Number three is your maintenance and emergency procedure binder. Again, governed by the NFPA, they state every clinic is required to have a maintenance schedule showing and documenting the maintenance that's been done on your equipment, whether it's the oxygen side of your equipment or on the chamber side of your equipment, but that regular maintenance is happening, being signed off and being documented as to when those things were done. And either within that same binder or in a separate binder that you have a documented series of emergency procedures. Things like, what would you do if the lights or the power went out in your building? What would you do if there was a malfunction on the oxygen side of your system? What would you do if a patient had a seizure in your chamber? What would you do if there was a fire in your building? You need to document and have a list of what are the emergency procedures that could happen in a hyperbaric clinic and what do you want your staff and your technicians and the doctors inside that clinic to do in case of those emergencies? In that binder, it should also include things like emergency contact phone numbers, insurance that you have on your clinic, insurance that your manufacturer has on your chamber, the FDA approval and the ASME stamp on your equipment when and if that's appropriate. All of those things can be housed inside your emergency procedures and your maintenance binder. And number four is FDA approved and or ASME and PVHO approved equipment. Now, why is this important? 
especially one of the questions I get all the time is, if I'm predominantly choosing to use this equipment to help patients with non-FDA approved conditions, why would it matter if I use FDA approved devices? These are two completely different conversations. The first is you're choosing to apply a therapy off label. In other words, you're choosing to use this therapy for non-FDA approved conditions, which is completely fine to do. In medicine, medications or other therapies are prescribed off label all the time. So is somebody allowed to use a device off label? The answer of course is yes, particularly when it's appropriate. So you understand the mechanisms of action for the therapy that you're using. You understand that the condition or the health goals that the patient is trying to achieve. And if it makes sense to apply this therapy and these mechanisms to these goals, then that makes perfect sense. And any therapy would be allowed to be used off label in those cases. However, the device itself first has to be deemed safe for either human consumption or safe for human use. In other words, if there was a medicine that was FDA approved for a particular condition, but it had certain other benefits, you could absolutely prescribe that medication off label. However, if that medication was deemed unsafe or unfit for human consumption, you couldn't prescribe that therapy or that medication on label or off label because the actual medication itself was not safe for human consumption. And that's where this conversation comes in. The equipment, if it's FDA approved equipment, what they're saying is it meets the build to standards for patient safety. We believe that a patient going into this chamber will be safe inside that chamber. Should you now choose to apply that therapy on label or off label becomes the clinician's choice, but the device you're using has been deemed safe. If you're using non-FDA approved equipment, then there is no burden of proof that has been met to show that the equipment being used is safe to put a human inside that chamber. As a result, should anything happen inside that chamber or as a result of that treatment, that clinician or that clinic will be deemed liable for that accident. And there will be no ability to go back to the manufacturer or have any association with the equipment because you chose to put a non-FDA approved device inside your clinic, even though you knew that there were FDA approved devices. At that point, the entire load of liability will be put on the clinician, the technician, or the clinic itself for having made that decision. So please make sure that whatever device you choose to use is an FDA approved device. So these are the four things that I recommend every hyperbaric clinic should have in order to operate safely and effectively. As part of the International Board of Undersea Medicine, part of our mission is to simplify this process for those folks trying to get into hyperbaric oxygen therapy. As a result, we've taken steps like putting the safety director course online. That way, more clinics could easily obtain safety director without even leaving their home. We've also put a basic hyperbaric technician course online, again, so that you can start introducing these concepts even without leaving your home state. We also have in-person trainings like our intermediate hyperbaric technician or our hyperbaric clinician courses that really take that education to the next level. In an attempt to get the right type of information to the right type of clinic, we've created different paths. So depending on what type of equipment you're using, hard chambers or soft chambers, depending on what type of oxygen sources you're using, concentrators, gaseous bottles of oxygen or liquid oxygen, depending on what types of patients you're expecting or trying to attract into your clinic would determine which versions of all of these courses you should really have access to, but we're creating a path for each version so that anybody trying to get into hyperbaric oxygen has a path to get what they need in order to run a safe and effective clinic. So if you've already met all of these requirements, you're doing a great job and I congratulate you for that. Again, don't forget, there's a continuing education component to this as well and recertification process for all of these different levels of education. If you've done some of them, but not all of them, or you haven't even gotten started yet in the education, please take a look at our website, thehbotcourse.com, and you could see different versions of safety director and different technician courses or different operator courses and different clinician courses to help you get the education that you're looking for, along with business support, because obviously it's important to know the safety, it's important to know the protocols, 
how you apply this therapy is really important in terms of the results you're trying to get, but so is building an effective business so that people can find you and that you have the right systems in place, the right policies and procedures in place to run a successful business. And so we support both the education as well as the business side in an attempt to make sure that you can run a successful business and help as many patients as possible. So I appreciate your time and attention so far, and I wanted to add a bonus for you. So number five, the fifth thing that every clinic should have is to get a copy for your clinic of The Art and Science of Hyperbaric Oxygen Therapy. That's a book that I wrote with Dr. Joe DeTore, who's the executive director of the International Board of Undersea Medicine. And he and I, again, in an attempt to simplify this process, have written what we consider to be virtually the PDR the Physician's Desk Reference Book of Hyperbaric Oxygen Therapy, going into the history of hyperbaric oxygen, all of the mechanisms of action in detail, and protocols associated with the mechanisms of action, along with other benefits that we can expect patients to receive as a result of this therapy, and indications, both on-label indications and off-label indications, going into the details of the rationale of the therapy, along with patient selection criteria, who should be getting this therapy, along with what is the assumed protocol based on that indication, again, both on-label and off-label. And so there's a tremendous amount of information, especially on the clinical side, for operating these hyperbaric chambers effectively and safely and getting the most up-to-date protocols possible. And if you're interested in a copy of that book, click the link below and you'll have access to be able to order that book. I want to thank you for your time and attention, and I really look forward to helping you in your journey of implementing hyperbaric oxygen in your practice.